All right, this is part two of the skeletal system. And we're going to get into joints. Now remember in part one, I was telling you that whenever two bones are connected, they're connected by ligaments. And you can see the illustration of the ligaments there. But that is called a joint, where bone connects to bone. So a connection between two or more bones, or between cartilage, which you can see in the white there, cartilage and bone is called a joint. Joints provide flexibility and enable the skeleton to move in a lot of different ways than other organisms that do not have, especially like the exoskeletons and stuff like that. Joints are designed for a specific function, and they're classified into two groups, movable joints and immovable. Some books you look in will have, and the lab will have, three, immovable, slightly movable, and freely movable joints. The movable joints, or in some books it will be called the freely movable joints, are the ball and socket, hinge, pivot, and gliding. Gliding is the common name. Condyli condyloid is the scientific name of the gliding joint. A ball and socket is exactly what it says. On one end of, the, of one bone, there's a ball. And on the other bone, there's an indentation, a cup like a saucer, a socket. And that ball fits into that socket. And of course, there's cartilage and some other things in there that enable it then to move. And it's held together by ligaments. So a ball and socket. And you can see the type of movement. And all you have to do is move your shoulder or move your hip, your leg and your hip. So your arm and your shoulder, leg and your hip, that's the ball and socket joints. And you can see the type of movement. A hinge is just like the hinge on a door, allows for one way motion. And a hinge is found in your knee. And what, what's pictured up here is the um, elbow. So the elbow has the radius, the humerus, and the ulna. And that's a hinge joint. And also your fingers, your phalanges, your toes are hinge joints. A pivot allows the one bone to move across the other. Like in, when you make a pivot in basketball, how the one foot stays, but you turn your um, lower leg in opposite directions to pivot, to move back and forth. And so it's rotating across the other. And that is found in two bones uh, in your arm, called the radius and the ulna. And it's also found in two bones in your leg, which is the tibia and the fibula. And then it's also in your, cerv your cervical vertebrae, the, the two top vertebrae, which is the axis and the uh, atlas. That allows your head to move from side to side, to pivot from one side to the other. The gliding, or the condyloid joint, is what is the bones that make up your wrist and the bones that make up your ankle. They are gliding, and they pivot over each other. I mean, not pivot. They glide over each other. And there's several bones there, as you can see. A slightly movable, which is not in, mentioned in your book, would be like your vertebral column. In between each of the vertebrae, those are slightly movable joints. Immovable joints means they can't move. And that's the interlocking margins of your skull bones. It's why you had a whole bunch of bones when you were born, but they weren't fused together yet. Because if you look at a skull, you got all kinds of bones that have been fused together now that you know that you're grown. When you were an infant, they weren't. That's why you had the soft spot. Well, all those cracks that you see are where those bones have been fused. And now that's an immovable joint. Now, let's get into the joint. The joint has several things in it besides just the bone and the cartilage and the ligaments, although we're going to refer to those again. God has also put some other cushioning devices. They're like shock absorbers. Can you imagine um, all the running and jumping and things if you did not have shock absorbers in especially like your knee joint? 
It's also in your elbow and your those kinds of joints. And what there is, there's a membrane. So you have the cartilage, and then you have a membrane around the cartilage, and it fills up with a fluid. There's actually cells in this membrane called the synovial membrane that manufactures the fluid. And that fluid then is held in that sac, the synovial membrane sac. And it is a shock absorber. So it's going to help reduce friction and reduce shock. Uh, it's also like if you get injured and there's more water or more of that liquid, it's not pure water, that is re, um, made there because of an injury, that's when they refer to like water on the knee. When you have an injury and you get a lot of water and they usually have to take a needle in there and remove some of that. Here's a good picture showing you the relationship of where the cartilage is and then see the synovial membrane, how it surrounds this cartilage on both ends of the bone and it's filled up with the fluid. The ligament, as we've already mentioned, connects the bone to a bone and this of course is showing you some ligaments on your vertebrae, your spine. Here's good ligaments uh, showing in your knee connecting bone to bone. A tendon, remember it's white, cord-like, and it's connecting a muscle to the bone. Probably one of the most familiar ones to you is what you call your Achilles tendon, which is on the very back of your heel. And it, you can see it's connected to your heel bone called the calcaneus. Here's showing you some ligaments and tendons. Ligaments on the right, tendons on the left. Now a bursa is another, there are other fluid sacs. They're like little fluid pillows. And they're lined with the synovial membrane as well and they have fluid in there and they're shock absorbers. Uh, they're found, as you can see, a lot of times between muscle and ligaments and muscle and tendons and ligaments and tendons. Here's three of them outlined in green uh, that are in your knee. You also have some that are, in, see the big purple little bubble-like things? That, that's in your shoulder, so you have a lot of bursa. Uh, when that gets inflamed, it causes a disorder that is known as bursitis. So if you've ever known anybody to have bursitis, it's an inflammation of one or more of the bursa. And as I said, they serve as a cushion. They reduce friction. They're shock absorbers. Now some diseases of the joints and some disorders of the bones and joints. We're going to look at um, arthritis, uh, rheumatism, sprains, double jointedness, and osteoporosis. Arthritis is a disease in which the joints become irritated or inflamed. They get an infection and such as when the cartilage in your joints is damaged and wears away. It's usually accompanied by pain and a lot of times it can actually change the structure of that joint and be very um, handicapping. It can handicap you and uh, pain, lots of pain. Rheumatism, not rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is another crippling disease and um, this is just rheumatism and it refers to a bunch of various conditions that are soreness or stiffness of your muscle and joint. A sprain is when you stretch a ligament and severe sprains you can actually tear the ligament which takes some time to heal and sometimes it even takes surgery to heal. So that's what a sprain is, you're stretching, it's a stretch injury to the ligament, stretched it too far. Double jointedness, the reason people are double jointed is because they have abnormally long ligaments. And so that allows then their joints to become easily dislocated because the function of the ligaments is to keep those joints in place. And then osteoporosis, it's a common bone disease which causes the bones to become weakened and brittle. And it's um, more often seen in women. Uh, and it has to do with the estrogen cycle and the depleting of the calcium. But you can see over time, depending upon what area is um, suffering from the osteoporosis, 
if it's your spine you can see how that causes the hump and so forth that you see in some people uh, it can be in your hip it can be in your leg bones it can be in different areas but the common one is in the hip and in the spinal uh, bones your vertebrae and that's osteoporosis and it's important to prevent that I remember watching uh, <clears throat> Dr. Oz when he was on Oprah one time and he talked uh, no it wasn't Dr. Oz it was actually a female doctor who dealt with females and uh, the female problem of osteoporosis is one thing that she dealt with and she said that drinking carbonated drinks like coke is like peeing your brain you're not your brains peeing your bones out and she said because the uh, caffeine in it is depleting the calcium out of your bones and that's then going to be a cause or it's going to help you to get osteoporosis so that was a drinking a lot of the carbonated cokes or carbonated drinks to keep your bones healthy of course one of the things that you need is a, a steady exercise program without exercise the bones weaken and they lose mass which means they're getting smaller and of course we mentioned about the calcium they also need vitamin D so calcium and vitamin D are important in preventing osteoporosis by getting sufficient amounts of that because bones supply calcium to your nerves your muscles and your heart and remember the interaction here so the bones are supplying calcium to some other systems nerves muscles heart and a healthy skeletal system is important in maintaining that internal balance working together with muscles bones enables you to move away from unpleasant stimuli or danger that's again how they help work together to maintain homeost 